today I will discuss on a very important topic which is uterine fibroid. Why is this important? This is important because this is the commonest problem that women suffer during the reproductive age group. Fibroid is basically a benign tumor of the uterus. So what do we mean by benign? Benign means something which is not cancerous, which is not malignant. That is true in 99.9% .9 of cases. So a patient with fibroid in the uterus, majority of cases, they don't even know, they are not aware that there is a fibroid. So in majority of cases, they are asymptomatic, which means they don't have any problem. But in some cases, they might be having problems like pain in a lower abdomen or pain during a periods, pain, irregular pain or irregular bleeding, heavy bleeding, which is called menorrhagia or abnormal uterine bleeding of any sort. Sometimes fibroid can also result in a big mass which the patient can feel in her abdomen. Sometimes fibroids can cause recurrent miscarriages or sometimes they are associated with infertility. So because of all these problems, sometimes women come to gynecologists to seek treatment for fibroid. And sometimes what happens, patients come with some other symptoms and on ultrasonography it is found that she has a fibroid. So whatever this fibroid, in majority of cases, no treatment is required. But these patients need to be kept under follow-up because we need to know whether the follow on follow-up whether the fibroid is increasing in size or not. And the usual method to follow it up is by serial ultrasonography. But of course, if the fibroid is causing any problem, which I discussed just a little before, then they need treatment. And the treatment can be medical treatment or it can be surgical treatment. In medical treatment, the commonest treatment that we give for a patient who is not desirous of having a child is giving her an oral contraceptive pill or giving medicines which are called progesterone or sometimes inserting an LNG IUD inside the uterus which is called Mirena and that releases a little bit of hormone daily on a daily basis inside the uterus which causes shrinkage of the fibroid. Very recently, few other recent drugs have been discovered like Ulipristol or Mifepristone. I know the names are very bombastic, but these are very new medicines which has come and they can cause shrinkage in the fibroid. So these are sometimes tried. Now which one is to be tried when? It is up to the discretion of the gynecologist and depending on the requirement of the patient. Now when we come to the surgical treatment, that means usually that the medical treatment has failed or she is having so much of problem that medical treatment is not worth it. In those cases, there are two types of treatment surgically possible. One is to keep the uterus and remove the fibroid. This is usually done for women who wants to have another child, which is called a myomectomy operation. And this can be done through laparoscope, which is called a laparoscopic myomectomy, which is the usual order of the day these days. And in the old fashioned way, we can do an open hysterect, open myomectomy, which means open the abdomen, remove the uterus, uh, remove the fibroid, close the uterus and then close the abdomen. And the other extreme form of treatment is hysterectomy, which means removal of the whole uterus with the fibroid altogether when the age is around 40 years plus or 45 plus and she is not desirous of any more children. Now as far as myomectomy concerned, this is a quite tricky operation. In laparoscopic myomectomy, usually we don't tend to do laparoscopic operation if the number of fibroids are more than four, if the size of the fibroids are very big, and if the patient is anemic, severely anemic, because in those cases, if there are a number of fibroids and big, big fibroids, then laparoscopic operation takes a longer time. But otherwise, laparoscopic removal of fibroid is the gold standard these days. Hardly ever we should open her abdomen to remove fibroids, because opening the abdomen can have, can have other complications like infections, like adhesions, like tubal blocks, etc., etc.